Hello, everyone, and welcome to True Crime Case Race, the show where we drink and try to make comedy out of messed up cases. I'm your host, Todd, here with my co-host, John, and today we are talking about Gabby Petito. John, what are you drinking? Well, Todd, you know me. I am uh, drinking a delicious summer shandy, although it is December 8th, at, or I'm sorry, October 8th as of this recording, so, you know. How, well, how many shandies have you had? <laughs> that's actually the first one. Um, so, yeah. The season is almost over. What are you drinking, Todd? I know. I got a whiskey Diet Coke. Um, Do we... I no, know I'm sorry. That you, vodka Diet Coke. What the fuck am I talking about? Spectra. That's a, <clears throat> and then I got a Truly here. You drink enough of these, they'll put you on your ass. I haven't cracked this one, but halfway through the episode, you know, we'll get to it. Um. So I know, like, we both hate podcasts where they, like do a ton of extra talking about random shit, like a, mm-hmm. a podcast of the same genre and similar style that goes on for three hours. But I, um, I do think we should explain our format going forward because our first two episodes were extremely disorganized and we are aware of that. And we want to thank the people that listened, the few of you that did. So moving forward, we're going to start by talking about, we're going to start by talking about who, the episode's about, we're going to talk about what we're drinking, because again, this is true crime case race, where we drink and make fun of cases. Um, and then we're going to go into like the background of the person. So in this case, we're going to talk about Gabby's background. If it was like a serial killer, we talk about their background. Then we're going to talk about the event or the events. So like this case, her disappearance, you know, like a ser- serial killer, like uh, um, the fat virgin Todd Culp. We'd talk about like his, right. you know, his thing. And then we're going to talk about the outcome, if there was one, or if it was like unsolved, then, you know, what we think is going to happen and what we thought happened and then just kind of tee off on the idiots involved. So obviously this one is really fresh. Like I said, we're recording this on, yeah, we're recording this on October 8th. So we're going to give as much update as we can. Um, This one's definitely a little more hard hitter. It's not like, you know, it's funny. All the Brian laundry. Yeah. It's so active. active, fresh. Um, so for you guys who do not know, Gabby Petito um, was a social media influencer, I guess we'd call her. Mm-hmm. Um, she was born on March 19th, 1999 and grew up in the state of New York. And that's where she met her boyfriend and her future boyfriend and fiance, Brian Laundry. but we'll get to him. Um, she wasn't a massive influencer, but she had about 100,000 followers around the time she disappeared. Um, and then on July 2nd, Gabby and Brian set out for a four-month expedition uh, so essentially they're going to travel across, you know, all these parks, do like a United States park tour, um, you know, and obviously the fact that she was an influencer, she was documenting the whole thing, you know, so people were seeing where her and Brian were at, what she was doing, um, things like that. I guess, do you want to kind of move from there and then to kind of like where things change? Cause yeah, know. sure. Um, so during this, uh, the four months, um, they, they kind of plan to like visit as, as many national parks and travel across the country. Um, being social media influencers, the majority of this would be documented. Um, they had obviously video cameras. Um, from the outside perspective, the first month and a half went like extremely pretty smoothly um, with one exception there, that being um, on October 12th, we, we saw what, what might August have been our 12th. first. I'm sorry, August, August. What did I say? October 12th. But yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. We're all screwed up because it's October now. Uh, yeah. Uh, on August 12th, uh, we, saw, we saw what might have been our first uh, clue as to what was to happen. Um, and that was ultimately the, the disappearance and then the homicide of her. Uh, police were called to investigate domestic abuse. It was called in by a person who, who witnessed him slapping her. Um, he claimed that Brian was pushing Gabby and hitting her. When the police arrived, Gabby was visibly upset, crying uh, and shaking the majority of the time. Um, so anyone who's listening like to this podcast and is aware of this case right. is probably very aware of this video. This video is kind of the only real thing we have at this point. Um, what are your opinions on it? Let's go into a little bit of that because I think of, it's, of the actual video. Yeah, it's of, kind of, of the police cr- interrogate or the police uh, kind of arrest, as you would call it, which yeah. wasn't really arrest, but. Um, because I she ended up being what she ended up being considered the she was never charged but she was considered the main like instigator I, is that yeah the right word? basically she was the ab- abuser is what they you know call him and he was the victim so basically they pulled him over and he had some scratches on his face and he basically said that 
Well, they pulled her out and questioned her and she said, hey, it's just been a really bad morning. And he wouldn't let me in the car because she wanted to be calm. Like he wanted her to calm down. And she claimed that she was calm. But if you watch the footage, she was anything but calm. Yeah. And at first she said like she was crying because they were just fighting, which I mean, it's really easy with hindsight to be like, oh, here's what was going on. But like couples do get in arguments, just, you know, word arguments and people right. cry. So like, I'm and not he was kind of saying he was saying like, you know, you're not going to be a he was basically saying that she wasn't going to be able to do her vlog and vlog stuff. Because yeah. She, she wasn't going to, she, she had like a hundred thousand followers. So it's like, dude, she already had, is pretty successful. Right. Um, I don't know. He, he, it, the one thing that kind of struck me in that whole video was the fact that he told the cops that he didn't have a cell phone and then he pulls out a cell phone. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. That was, I actually, I've watched a lot of stuff about this as I'm sure you have. And that's one thing that that person whose video I watched pointed out, like how he says he doesn't have a cell phone and he literally pulled one out, which is so, so strange. People say maybe it was her phone or whatever, Possibly. but, but also the other thing that was really odd to me was like, she was so visually shook and he like didn't seem to care at all. And the reason I bring this up is because I said before, like couples do get in arguments just, you know with words but we've all been there where like we see a couple argue like a bar and the girls like crying the dude's like pissed off like they're showing like you know they're mad this guy had like no emotion and that was really strange to me that was like one thing that really really uh, i think you just muted you just oh you just cut out for a second yeah you just cracked a cold one I obviously we're, we're we are uh, we're on zoom but uh our next couple podcasts are going to be in person because we're going to be seeing each other. So they'll sound a little better. Um, but yeah, d- you know what I'm talking about? Like he just seemed very calm, which <laughs> kind of almost seemed a, couple, a little. Yeah. He reminds ahead. me of some people that I know and you know him too, but we're not going to name them. Um, <clears throat> I'll text you after the episode or call you and let you know who I think he reminds me of, but I'd be curious, he, just, yeah. he just reminds me of like a conniving um, manipulative person. And it's like, if you really just based off of appearances and I'm not appearances, you know, take it as you will. I think like she was a, a beautiful girl. She, she really, she, she's 22. Yeah. Very cute. Yeah, cute, very Attractive. Girl. And yep. he was just average. I felt like he was average. Like she could have probably been with anybody. And it's very sad to see that she. Well, it was definitely you're like, they met in high school. Yeah, that's you know, he kind con- she kind of grew and Blossom, and he kind of did not. So we want to move into the crimes and, and disappearance? Yeah, let's get moving to that. So right. I'll start us off. So uh, this is where things get really weird, and this case is still really bizarre to me. So on September 1st, Brian returned home to his family's home, which was in Florida, right? They must have yes. moved down there at some point. Just okay. east of Englewood, and I, so, yeah. I was just in Englewood. So he comes back with their, like, minivan thing without Gabby, doesn't report her missing, doesn't really well we don't know what he said to his parents obviously um we gotta talk about that we can we can definitely talk about that we'll talk about that in our last section or speculative section um so a few days later they go camping and it wasn't until a full 10 days later on september 11th that a a missing persons report was filed by gabby's mom um so this started getting the national attention obviously like we talked about you know a lot of people have pointed about how like you know, she was posting and like tagging all these locations. And then like her last post or two didn't tag any location. Then she just went rogue. And like, you know, we all know people that if they like didn't post for a while, we'd be like, is something wrong? Especially someone who like is documenting their trip. Um, you know, so her, this gets national attention. The public is like crying out for where she's at. Brian and his family are just like not saying anything, doing anything. They're not even Never- responding to Gabby's parents. Yeah. Like just totally blocking them out. So then four days later, um on the 15th brian was named a person of interest but not a suspect and this is i think where people get a little confused in the difference in legalities if you're a suspect but not a i'm sorry if you're a person of interest but not a suspect you can like leave the country you can travel you can well, you do, can leave you can leave the country of your suspect too right you well it's just a lot it's a lot harder to well get i think as long as you're not under arrest you can do whatever you want um he was named a person of interest before the body was even found. Right. Yes. So this is on September 15th. Um, and then four days later on the 19th, human remains were found in grand, uh, the grand Tetons national park that fit a description. They ended up, you know, confirming through 
uh, attest that it was her and it was a, a homicide. And then on September 23rd, an arrest warrant was put out for Brian, but it was actually for using her credit card. It was not for the murder. So as far as I know, to this day, he still has not been, like I said, we're recording this on October 8th, hope to have this out by a day or two. I don't think he has still yet been convicted or, you know, the suspect in her murder. Um, so this is now where it gets more weird. <laughs> so then Brian was reported missing by his parents. You know, they claim that he went into this large nature reserve in Florida that he, he, you know, he hiked in all the time, right? Has not been seen or heard from since, you know, there's a ton of speculation. He's on the run. Uh, there's been some supposed sightings in North Carolina, which could go into the theory that he's trying to travel the Appalachian trail. I mean, obviously he's got the nomad background, um, so he could last for a while. So I want to know your kind of opinions of like where you think they're going, what you think happened. That's kind of how we'll we'll wrap this up. There was a guy who said he saw him on the Appalachian trail in a white truck. I don't, I don't really believe that. Uh, Should we talk about the couple that picked him up like hitchhiking? That was kind of interesting. Yep. Or the people that found the van. I mean, there's been a lot of people that have seen him, but yeah, you can talk about the hitchhiking people and he wanted to get out of the car right away. And yeah. So there was a, there was a couple that picked him up hitchhiking um, like a couple days before he would have went home and he was alone, but he mentioned he had a fiance and they said that they were going to Jackson, like Wyoming. And he like freaked out and asked to be dropped off. So they just dropped him off for the next exit. Then there was another couple that also kind of does like a travel blog style. I forget their names, but they were actually traveling through the park and they have video of the van. Now there's two really weird things about this video. Now, when they're first driving up to it, the door to the back is open, but then when they get closer in the video, you can see the door shut. But there's also speculation that if you look closely, you can see somebody standing out in the field. Yeah. And now, you can also see like her shoe or something like that too. Yeah. You can see a sandal or something on the ground. Now, the only thing is I don't think he could obviously be in the field and have shut that van. Like he would have had to run up to the van and shut it mm-hmm. in front of them. So either the van was never shut to begin with and he was in the field or he was in the van and like her body could have been in the van and he shut it. Um, I think, I mean, what do you think happened? Let's just talk. I was about just going to say that. I was just going to say, I think it was a total crime of passion. Like, yep. I, agree. I don't know if alcohol or drugs were involved. Probably not, but it's possible. Obviously, if they were arguing, I mean, you and I went on like, what, what a eight day road trip and didn't have a single argument the whole time. Right. Right. Obviously, we're not dating. So there's a different <laughs> dynamic as friends right. versus relationship. But dude, they were supposed to go on a four month thing and they made it a month. Like, and then he ended up killing her. What kind of fucked up shit did they have going on in that relationship is what I want to know. I think she had a meltdown. I I truly believe this. I believe she had the meltdown and he was irritated and she started picking on him and he started picking on her and he just strangled her to death, literally, because, or he fucked her up somehow. I mean, only the homicide investigators and the autopsy are going to really know the true facts and that'll come out. Yeah, we don't, yeah, we haven't gotten that yet, which is It'll be interesting to do an update on this once he's caught because we will the day he gets caught we're getting on this and fucking doing another episode how long do you think how long do you think he's gonna be on the run for could be a long time and i'll tell you why i think that his parents know exactly where he is i think they gave him 20 grand cash and he's in a different i believe that he's probably in a different country um and you and i got vast to the caveat resources Traveling the United States, there's a lot of places you could hide. There's People a lot of places, places you can hide. I mean, if, if he's got a propane burner, if he's got a propane grill, basically, and, you know, he can catch fish and hunt, and he has um, a means to, like, a water filter, like, a, a means to clean water, he's set, dude. He could be set for a very long time, and it could be a while before they catch this dude. I mean, look at somebody like Whitey Bulger, the fucking most notorious gangster of all time was hiding in plain sight in Santa Monica. If this guy were smart, he'd, he'd rent a little shithole apartment for cash in some mediocre town, or he'd go into like a big town and just wear a mask all, you know, for COVID. He could hide out for a long time because he looks, dude, he looks just like me. He looks just like you. Just He's any got, other dude, just, just dark hair. random dude. Yeah. You know, put on some sunglasses I, and a face mask, dude. You're never in a ball cap. You're never going to know who he is. Back to, um, back to what we think happened. Cause I agree with you. I think it was, 
I don't think this was planned, and that's this is not us making an excuse. It's murder either way, obviously. Yeah. No, um, no. I, I, just I don't think, think yeah, happened. I don't think it was planned. I think that either A, they got in a fight and he strangled her, or he, like, hit her and she hit her head and died, like, you know, and then he's yeah. like, oh, shit. Because let's, let, let's just be honest. We don't want to say put yourself inside the mind of a criminal, but if this guy planned to kill her, he's an idiot. he did a very, very bad bad job like he he buried her body like barely off a main trail which you're in a fucking national park people don't realize how big these parks are like if you walked a mile into the woods and buried somebody six feet deep they're never gonna find that person ever well he must not have even buried her because they would not have found her if she was buried that easily i mean maybe with the cadaver dogs possibly right if you're gonna dump a body like that dump it in a fucking water like dump it in water yeah. or burn we, it. We've also talked about this too, like how we don't think he planned it. Like we think if he was planning this, he would have like made something up. Like, oh, I went into the gas station and she was gone because sex trafficking happens all the time. Or, oh, yeah. we were on a hike and she slipped and fell. Yeah, it'd be mysterious and there'd be a lot of questions about it, but people would – you don't like, just go home and go, huh, yeah, I don't know. Do you, think, do you think he was just, like, in shock? But the thing is, yeah. this is where it gets interesting in time frame, is that, like, we're going to assume that when the couple picked him up to hitchhike, he had killed her, right? So, yeah. like, I, I don't know if he was, like, in shock and just drove home and told his parents. So, do you think, his, do you think he 100% told his parents, like, yep, I killed her? Because yep. I've, I've been seeing a lot I think of people. He was, I, yeah, what do you think? Well, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of people say, like, how could you ever protect your son and all this stuff? And I'm like, yeah, I don't think, number one, if you're not a parent, I don't really think that that's a fair judgment. And I think if you put a thousand parents on a lie detector test, you'd be surprised how many would say they'd do the same thing. If I'm I agree with you 100%. Like, you know, like, it's, like I always say, it's easy to cross that line, but the line is presented to very few people. And that's actually a quote by a guy named Mark Dreyer, who spent, is spending like 15 years in prison for defrauding hundreds of investors well anyways i believe that he came home and he said to his parents i fucked up we got in a fight i accidentally snapped her neck nope i hid the body i don't know what to do and they're like well the first thing we're gonna do is go contact a lawyer and that's what they did the lawyer said shut the f up and then he was because they lied about they lied about when he left they said it was on a certain date but it was actually 24 hours previous and that news came out today and his dad is actually oh, really? searching no. for him right now with the FBI, which is so disingenuous, dude. It's so Why? disingenuous. Yeah. You think they're just trying to cover their tracks? I think the parents know a lot more. Like, if I ever was in his situation, God forbid, like, shit, shit happens, okay? We all hope and pray that none of us are ever in a situation where a fight goes bad and something happens, right? I, I really truly truly believe that that's what happened that's really unfortunate but like there's one person i would tell and i don't even i'm not even like super close with that person but i trust them and i would be out of here so quick it'd be unreal so to say that dude his parents know where he is (laughs) i agree i was think i i think that's exactly what happened and here's the thing guys this is not what's right. It's about the way our court system is. We all know yep. this guy killed her. Everyone yep. on the planet knows he killed her. There's no evidence that he killed her. So right. I think at this point anyway, so I think the parents took the approach of, well, they don't have any evidence. And if you don't say the wrong thing, it's all pure speculation. Exactly. And, and here's the other thing is like, just because you're found not guilty doesn't mean you're innocent. I think right. that if he goes to actual court and gets tried, he'll get fucking fried. Two reasons. Number one's public opinion. Everybody fucking hates him and all the resources that have been spended have been spent trying to find this guy. That's number one. And number two, there's probably evidence on her fucking body based off of where he was found. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'll be And he's I on am, the run, which doesn't look I, great. I'm just well, yeah, that's that's I mean this is clearly one of those things of like, we all know, we just don't have the one thing to connect it, right? Like if they, they find his DNA on her, you know. Well, look at somebody her. like uh, Casey Anthony, right? This, this yeah. is a lot of similarities. The parents were very involved with Casey Anthony, right? They testified on her behalf. At least the mom did, I believe, right? Can't remember for sure. Down in Florida. And she was, she was actually acquitted. Have you ever seen the roast of Justin Bieber? No. 
well, there's well maybe, a, this is maybe. this is this is years ago. This is what he was still shit there. But, yep, but uh, you know, his I don't think his dad's in the picture. And Nikki Glazer says Jesus, Justin, even Casey Anthony knows where her kid is. <laughs> That's bad. So bad, dude. That's so bad. bad. We'll talk about her probably at some point. Oh, for sure. But that's exactly like you're women right. Who that's kill because we don't want to skip out on the whole feminism. Yeah. <laughs> we got to cover some women, right? Right, like Casey Anthony. Like everyone on the planet knows Casey Anthony did it, but yeah. she got off. You know, most people think OJ did it. Yep. You know, so this is one of those situations where, like, this dude could like. You know, let's say somehow, like crazy scenario, like let's say the natural elements, like let's say the body would have been out there longer and there was no evidence because it was, you know, whatever, Raining off the and- body. Yeah. Everyone on planet Earth, you know, this dude could come to work for you and you'd be like, I know you fucking did it. Everyone knows you did it, but right. you can't prove it. Sad. So what do you, th- you think is going to happen? Because uh, like we said, we will, we will, um, we will... You know, if we get an update, we'll talk about it at least in another episode. I don't know if we'll do a full thing. It depends on the story. Well, I think, think a lot depends on how the FBI prioritizes their their search. You know, I mean, if something bigger and better, if they decide to investigate a political leader, like they spend their time doing over the past you know couple of years, we're not going to see much. Um, if they actually do their fucking job and catch people that murder and rape, then we'll we'll catch them. Um, and I think like that's really the the bottom bottom line here is it's all going to come down to what the FBI wants to do, and if they continue the searching, I mean, you got a lot of you really got to look at the media too. Like Nancy Grace is keeping it in the headlines. Dog the bounty hunter is keeping it in the headlines. John Walsh is keeping it in the headlines. There's three heavy hitters right there that are trying to do their best. I know Dog the bounty hunter is getting a lot of flack for for talking about it, but then going on the search, but eventually he'll be found. I think so. Um, unless he kills himself then he'll be yeah. brought to justice and he'll be tried and convicted. Most likely. I think he'll be convicted if he goes, if, if it's a jury trial, he'll get convicted. See, I said this before. So sorry. before I read anything about this case, I like just told you, Oh, I think I killed himself. Then when I started digging in, I was like, no, this dude's way too like sociopathic to kill himself. This dude, I think, maybe gets off on knowing he can run. I mean, it's kind of a crazy thought to be like, all these people are looking for you, and you're just hiding in the United States. And I want to go back to something we talked about. You know, people always say like, oh, with cameras and all this stuff, you can't find them. Or how can you not find them, right? Well, you and I have driven across the United States, dude. Mm-hmm. Go to Wyoming. Go to Kansas. There's a lot of places in the United States where you could just fucking just be out in the woods or in a field, and no one's going to see you. I mean, we you traveled know? what? 2,400 miles in like 30 hours, something like that. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, we drove from Wisconsin to down to uh, Santa Rosa. New Mexico to San Diego to I mean, we went we from Wisconsin yeah. to New Mexico in 18 hours. Yeah. But the reason we bring That's, that up is there's a lot of – you got to realize like the coasts are big, right? You got big cities on each coast and a couple in the middle, you know, Chicago, Minneapolis, Kansas City, things like that. Pittsburgh's kind of, you know, not on the coast. The rest of the country is not a lot of shit, dude. I mean, yeah. Montana, all these, you know, it's trees and woods and shit. So if he's hiking, dude, the Appalachian Trail goes like basically the entire eastern side of the United States. I mean, mm-hmm. might run into some wrong turn hillbillies up there. But <laughs> I think, I truly think like if he's on the Appalachian Trail and he's playing it smart and you got to realize there's also going to be a lot of towns. It's not like his face is plastered everywhere. Like, there's a lot of places this dude can go that people aren't going to know who he is. I mean, do you think that's fair to say? Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. that... Uh, do you have anything else you want to add? I mean, this is kind of a shorter one because we don't have the outcome. We don't really know what's going to happen. So, I mean, do you have anything you want to add, really? No, I, I do. We, we both hope, we hope. We hope justice is served, obviously. 100%, I, and I, I think also, like... We're going to be doing a lot of updates on this, so stay tuned. Um, you know, we'll do a brief recap of this episode during our next one, but not not too intense. And we'll keep moving forward with it. You guys can be assured that the minute he's found is the minute we'll be getting the mics rolling. So, I guess one thing I want to quick add on format: um, we kind of have a general idea of how we're going to attack our podcast. So, like, we're going to do seasons if you will. So our first season is going to be about serial killers. 
Our second season is going to be about unsolved mysteries. Obviously, if there's a but news headline have, like breaking news correct. like this, we're gonna we're gonna cover it. Yeah. So this is us kind of like jumping out of it. Um, yep. This is a breaking talk- news episode. Yep. So those will be like the you know insertions into the seasons if there's something crazy that happens. Um, and then we're gonna talk about female killers at some point. We're gonna talk about people who, excuse me, um, like got off. You know that. Casey Anthony, um, OJ, you know, people like that, that mm-hmm. everyone thinks did it, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's kind of our format. Um, thank you to the people who have listened. There are some of you, um, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. no, do you want to talk for another three hours? Like certain other no. podcasts? No, no, <laughs> no. Um, yeah. And we will, like I said, once we get something of update, we'll either do an episode about it if it's worthy or we'll add it into another episode or, Cause like we said, we're going to be seeing each other two of the next three weeks and we're going to try to pump out four or five episodes in that time. So we're going to have a lot of content coming. So um, apologize for the gap. Yeah. Thank you everyone for listening. Um, thank you guys. 